Howdy, welcome back to d Ray's shop. Well, as you can see, I've got a TRX 300 4 drive up on the lift today. And over the years, I've done several video series, anything from doing carburetor work. I uh, also did a, a series a few years ago on how to repair the axle bearings over here on the brake panel and how to remove that stuck axle if it's seized up in there and things like that. And I've gotten lots of feedback, and one of the questions I get real often is, man, would you do a service video on how to repair the rear end, you know, when the bearings and things like that go bad. So, I've got one here today that we're going to do that very repair to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through step by step how to remove the axle and the brake panel and all that. What I'll do is I'll drop a link down below to that video series if you haven't seen it yet. You can go back and watch that, and what we'll do is we'll pick up from here uh, on just actually removing the third member itself, then we'll get it up on the workbench, show you how to disassemble it, how to repair all the bearings and seals and things, then we'll just put it back in the swing arm and then from there on the, the assembly process for putting the axle and the brakes and everything else back together, I'll refer you back to the videos I shot a few years ago. All right, so let's get started. Now we've got the axle out of the way, we can work on removing the final drive. Now the first thing I like to do is, is remove the vent hose. And what I also like to do is take a blow gun and blow through that vent hose and make sure that it's open. You should hear that air coming out up close to where the steering handle goes. And Because uh, sometimes you'll get these where dirt daubers or mud and stuff will get packed up in there. And if that vent's closed off, it can actually cause it to suck water in around those seals and cause your rear end to fail. So next we'll remove the remaining hardware that holds the rear end to the swing arm. You've got four nuts on the front side here, and then you also have four bolts on this side. We'll take all those out and we should be able to remove that. As you remove this rear end, you can be aware that the drive shaft is going to come out with it. So we'll just take that and set it aside. And there's our final drive. Now we'll just take this over to the workbench and we'll disassemble it. Now we've got our final drive here on the workbench. What we'll do is we're going to flip this rascal over and we're going to take this backing plate off of it and see what we got on the inside. Now what you're going to have is you're going to have these bolts right here, which are going to be 8 millimeter bolts with a 12 millimeter head. But over here on the pinion side, you're going to have two 10 millimeter bolts with 14 millimeter heads. So we'll take all those loose. Now on the top and the bottom, there's a couple little pry points to pry the halves apart. So what we'll do is we'll take a screwdriver and just kind of ease in there, pry that up just like that. This one's being a little cantankerous. Don't that look pretty in there? Yeah. So there's our ring gear. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like all the gear teeth are on the pinion gear. Normally you'll find that there's a shim washer on either side of the ring gear. So you want to retain these. We'll clean them up and reuse them. I'm going to set this case aside temporarily. And next I'll take my screwdrivers. Let's see if we can't pry that ring gear up out of that case. All right, there's our ring gear. And there's our other shim washer. Yeah, boy, old well, thing's nasty. And this has got to be some of the stinkingest grease that you'll ever smell. All right, so I got our ring gear off. We'll set that aside. Now I'm gonna flip this over. I'm going to pry out the seal. There we go. 
we'll discard that. All we like on this cover here is just to press the bearing out. But what I'm gonna do first is as nasty as this is, I'm gonna just kind of disassemble everything as far as I can before I go to the press. Then I'm gonna clean everything up real good. And then we'll go over to the press and press all these bearings out. So I'll set this aside, grab our main case here again. What I'm gonna do next is we're gonna get this pinion out of here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pry the seal out. There's just a little old retainer ring here. We'll just pop that out, set that aside. And next I'm gonna work on easing this pinion seal out. There's our pinion seal. Man, that thing sure is nasty down in there. Look at all that. Blech. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to see from all that nastiness down in there, but there is an internal nut down here that holds the, the pinion bearing and the pinion in. Now, this is where you're going to have to have a special tool. This is a special tool that's designed just for those Honda rear ends and that fits in that inside of that, that retainer nut that holds that pinion in. Now you can get the OEM tool from Honda. This one's actually one I got through a distributor that I deal with called McDonald Distributing. It's part number TL1102, costs right around $100. You can actually Google that part number, TL1102, and you probably pull up a couple of aftermarket places that sells this. Uh, if not, drop me, a, drop me a line and I'll tell you how you can get one or I can even sell one to you and ship it to you. Next, we're going to drop this down in here. Get it engaged into that pinion nut real good. And then we'll see if we can't buzz that off of there. Alright. And there's your retainer nut. Okay. Now is going to be a little tricky part of getting this pinion out here because the bearing that you can probably see a little bit of down in there is kind of pressed into this case. Normally what you would do if um, the, the original Honda Special Tools for doing this, what you do is you take this retainer nut off the end of the pinion gear and it had a special adapter that you thread onto that pinion and then you take a slide hammer and you pull it out. Now, I'm trying to do this as much as I can from the point of the do it yourselfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a brass drift punch here and I'm going to get right here on the end of this pinion gear and I'm going to knock that on through there. That way using the brass punch you're a lot less likely to damage the teeth on the gear. There we go. There's our pinion gear, and as you can see, the old bearing there on it. It's all floppy. Okay. I'll go ahead and set this aside so we can clean it up a little bit later. Now I'm going to flip this back over. Take our last remaining seal out. We'll clean all this stuff up real good and then we'll move over to the press and see if we can press these bearings out. Well, I've given all of our parts here just kind of a good quick preliminary cleaning just to get most of the old cruddy oil and all that junk off of it so it wouldn't be making a mess everywhere. And I'm just about ready to go over to the press and start pressing the bearings and stuff out. And I got one last piece here that I need to take apart and this is our pinion gear. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to clamp me some vice grips down on that coupler there and we'll take the nut off. And that's the coupler that uh, attaches the pinion gear to the uh, drive shaft. So and we have to take this off so that we can press the bearing off the end. Okay, now we're ready to move over to the press. 
and start disassembling all these bearings.